Today we're going to look at Dendro. What's Dendro? Dendro is a plugin for Grasshopper. What does it do? Well, it generates meshes. What does it generate meshes from? What well, generates meshes from points? Architects, architecture students, and students thinking about studying architecture, you're in the right place. Let's get into it. All right, Dendro. So I mentioned that Dendro generates meshes from points. You can think of it as a point cloud. We'll call it a voxel cloud. What's a voxel cloud? Well, a voxel is a 3D pixel. And on the left, you see, you see Dendro creating the mesh, creating this blobby, organic, super cool colored mesh. And it's actually creating it from Stella 3D. Stella 3D is a generative geometry generator, generates points and trails from, from stars. You can look up my video on Stella 3D. We don't need Stella 3D to do this. We need curves that's all we need so any curves that you have you can divide curves with points and then you can create meshes all right so let's walk through this so the curves in this case are coming from this particular capsule but again they can come from anywhere they can come from anywhere so i'm just going to drop these in here and just i'm just going to make I'm just going to kind of follow this definition from left to right this is the definition that's already been pre-made and we're just going to mimic this as we go as we go across. Okay, so the first couple of capsules we're going to need are divide curve and a number slider. Okay? So the curves are coming out of this capsule. If I just highlight that, there you go. You see those funky awesome curves on the left. Okay? And we're going to take those curves and we're going to and that capsule is divide curve. Okay? divide curve not divide points divide curve okay we're going to plug in our curve here there you see all the points we're going to give it a number value of seven so just seven points the more points the more complex the mesh is going to become so you want to find a happy medium there okay a couple of number sliders that we're going to need to convert these points into three-dimensional volumes or meshes so we're going to need two capsules one is going to be our points to volume and the other is going to be our create settings so how rude of me we're working in dendro and i didn't even tell you where you could get dendro all right you search up dendro for grasshopper 3d it's going to take you to food for rhino where you fi find all plugins for grasshopper so food for rhino you'll find the dendro plugin all right how rude of me okay here we go here we go so one thing we're going to control is the voxel size which i'm calling the mesh resolution and i'm going to make that a value of 0 0.001 less than 10.000 so just pretty huge pretty huge range now I want to stay away from those low numbers, so that's probably not a great idea. Let's try, let's try 0 0.5, let's try 0 0.500, less than 10.000. So we don't have, and let's raise that number up because typically, when we're talking about mesh resolution, the lower the value, the more resolution equals more complexity. All right, so we're going to plug that into the voxel size. I'm just going to copy and paste this from above. This is going to be our mesh resolution. I'll go ahead and make a group out of that. All right, so we're not seeing anything yet. We're going to take that and we're going to plug those settings into our settings. We're going to plug in our points. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of move this up a little bit. Um, we got a data tree coming out of our points. We got a list of lists, the famous data tree, which Data trees, remember, are grafted lists. We can right-click on the points output, and we can simplify those lists down to, sorry, not simplify, but flatten. Let's get rid of simplify. Let's flatten it to a single list. So now you see a single line coming out of it. And then we have our point radius. Let's take the mesh resolution number slider. It sounds like something decent. I'm going to raise it up a little bit, and then let's plug that in. All right, now we're getting something. All right, let's make a mesh capsule. 
and let's go ahead and plug this in and then I'm just going to use shift control I which selects the inverse selects everything else but that mesh container and I'm going to choose preview off and uh, let's get rid of the okay there we go so now we see a mesh if you're not seeing mesh lines like triangles and quads in grasshopper go to main menu go to display go down to preview mesh edges or the shortcut control M you want to make sure that's on all right so we're, we're making some meshes now we're going to want to smooth them okay we could be happy we could say okay we got we have some meshes here let's uh let's play this let's take this stuff here let's take all of this stuff right click and disable it i'm going to disable all of that and let's uh let's play our little big bang from stella 3d okay so there you go you see that that wonderful mesh being generated generated what's generative modeling well the computer generates something and then you select from the generations that's as simple as generation modeling or generative modeling can get so I'm just gonna pause that so now we're gonna go into smoothing we're gonna go into smoothing the mesh and to smooth the mesh we're gonna get a smooth volume smooth volume capsule There we go. Okay, the volume that we're going to smooth is coming from the mesh. Okay, we're going to get we're going to get this red, but I imagine as we go through this, it might need to come directly from the volume. There we go. So it can't just cuz it converts it to a mesh and then this this input that says volume gets a mesh plugged into it doesn't know what to do with it. Okay, so we're going to have uh width type and resolution so let's go over the width okay so the width is optional width of smoothing this value acts as a multiplier it's another one of these multiplier values so whenever i have a multiplier value i put in a number slider with some decimals so how about 0 0.500 less than 75.000 in case i really want to multiply it let's put it somewhere there we go you're already seeing stuff happening in here so let's let's hide this and let's get a better look at this geometry uh, I haven't used a custom preview in a while love love my custom previews let's get a custom preview going here okay now now we can at least see and let's do it not that's the input this is the output okay so you see that being smooth okay we're not quite getting our mesh generations yet out of that but we'll get there we'll be able to see that a little bit better in a little bit all right type 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 we have Gaussian we have Lapazian we have mean and we have median so we have zero one two and three so let's make a number slider zero less than two less than three that gives me a number slider between 0 and 3, set to 2. And we'll put that into the type. And let's... All right, so we see some different types. 2 and 3 are pretty similar. 0 is nothing. 1 is just a big blob. So 2 and 3, pretty similar. I'm going to go with 2. Then the iterations. How many iterations? Usually the more iterations, the more complex geometry, the more, the more recesses recesses the more resources the more intense it is on your computer so uh i like between um one less than four i typically don't like to go higher than four when i'm doing smoothings sometimes i really don't like to even go higher than three but so you see when you smooth it you're you're kind of losing it because it's smoothing down um to almost nothing so um larger meshes this has more effect with the the iterations. Let's keep that to one. All right, we're gonna keep we're gonna keep mask the way it is. So here's here's our mesh resolution. That is the width, and then we also have our higher. Oh, we also have our higher val higher values equal merge voxels, and we saw that. We didn't get too high on this. I don't know if iterations, if values with decimal places work well. They might not. 
So like if I put, for instance, 1.000 less than 4.000, what is this going to work any differently as an iteration? No. It waits till it gets to two. It waits till it gets to those even integers. So that doesn't help at all. All right. So that's our smooth mesh. So let's uh, let's play the Big Bang. So let's play that Big Bang. Okay, we see that happening there. So I want to actually see the mesh in color, but my custom preview is not working coming out of my volume. It's not working coming out of the dendril solver. Okay, that's not working. So I'm going to use a deconstruct mesh and a construct mesh. So I'm going to go ahead and add a deconstruct mesh. And I'm going to plug that in. So that's deconstructing my mesh to vertices, faces, colors, normals. And then I'm going to use a construct mesh. Okay, doing this live while it's running is kind of interesting. I'm asking for a lot. I got video being <laughs> recorded. Um, so for, for colors, I'm going to go normal into colors. And there, that's where we get our colors. So that's deconstructing a mesh, and the only difference, vertices went to vertices, faces went to faces, but colors did not go to colors. The normal, the mesh normal went to colors. And you get this really cool, awesome result. Uh, we can... We can pause this at any point and uh, and bake it. Let's see. Let's get it right there. Perfect. Perfect. So let's go ahead and let's just put a mesh capsule here. And let's go ahead and bake it and see what we got. I'm going to bake that on a default layer. Oh, I'm loving it. Loving it. I think that that is just super awesome, this voxelated mesh that's created from dendril chromodorus is another plugin for uh, voxelated meshes but there's not many out there that create these complex voxelated meshes that i think are such cool geometry it's kind of like minecraft meets zaha Hadid. all right i hope you enjoyed this video i will see you on the next one